This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Hello Australia, welcome to another Big Couch. Hello New Zealand as well, I can't forget you. And hello to those people on the net that are watching us live. As you, as you know, we're now online, www.thecouch.com.au. We've got a big show coming up, check out who's on the show today. My good friends Ryan and Diana here from Cars. I can't wait to talk to them about cheese and wine and other things. Later on, our bitches are back with some great topics to talk about. And uh, Car is in with a brand new segment called Talking Guarding with Charles. And later, our pollies are back. I was just about to say the bitches are back, but the pollies are back doing poly waffle. Can't wait to have your company for the next hour. It's a big couch. 486 starts now. It's showtime on a couch. I saw Ryan pointing to the screen then. He recognised someone in you. Ryan, of course, being Ryan Schultz, the events organiser at uh, CARS, which is the Canning Agricultural Horticultural Recreational Society Incorporated of WA. <laughs> Long name, but we call them CARS. Please make them welcome. It is, of course, Diane Begg, who's Hiya. the CEO, and Ryan, of course, who looks after the events there, the events coordinator. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Now, we had a fantastic night the other night. We oh, had yes. some wine. Mm. And, and did you try the chilli wine, can I say? And welcome by, Thank by you. the way. Yes, I did try the wines. You know, they were just too good to walk past. That was a... Uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? And I, I've never... You know what? I love the way cheeses now come in so many different flavours. Yes. I, I oh. ate some really hot cheese and I thought, oh, wow, that's different. But you know what? It's so nice, the blend with the wine and the yeah, different crackers yeah. and stuff. So we had a good night, but you're here to talk about more than just that. Yeah, Who well, wants to start today? I suppose um, Thursday night was our, as our very first initiative to sort of introduce people to not just the society but the Canning Show and what we do as part of the Canning Show. Now we were launching the Canning Show. This is one of the launches, isn't it? Well, this, this was, I suppose, a minute launch towards a much larger launch, which, again, is another new event the society are doing this year. So we're, we're looking at, at the moment... Um, getting people in to start to learn the skills to exhibit at the Canning Show. So we've got a, a multiple workshops ready to go, which um, people can go straight to our website, check out the dates and times and, and sign up. Um, and what uh, we did on Thursday was actually invite along mm. some special guest speakers We've to actually talk. got footage. I think Adrian will roll some of the footage as well while we're talking. This is what we're looking at right now. There was a whole heap of members there, members yeah. of the public, and special speakers as well, wasn't there? It was fantastic. We had some fantastic jazz from yeah. these people. It gave people a chance to become a bit, you know, um, immersed into what we do and talk to other members and, and, you know, new people that might have seen us at promotions we did at WA Day or Carousel come along and actually you, right? learn a bit more about what we do. Yes, I like to talk. Do you know, I have to say, I told you when I when I came to the night the other night, you know, a lot of these, I go to a lot of these events, sometimes they get a bit boring and you yeah. sort of fall asleep. And as we all know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the speakers were motivational. The wine and, and, and cheese were a great addition. The music was beautiful. And the whole night and, and the room that you had it in there at Canning, Cannington, uh, was fantastic. Mm, sure, sure. Diane? And, and we, we talked last time we were on, Fred, about how the canning show needs to survive. We need to give people the opportunity to learn those traditional skills that they're learning. And look, we've got a, a jam making workshop coming up. And after a short session of um, a fantastic presenter talking about having a jam night, you know, we've got a whole class I, of people I learning. I was so impressed with the type of things that are being done in the community. And what it is, we all we all live in the community but so many so many things are now done on social media on the net it's all become so technical 
Yeah. And it's so nice to yeah. see people coming back to the simple things that make everybody happy and unite together as a community. Yeah. And I, where, where, whether it was the knitting with the machine knitting, sure. the floristry uh, classes, I thought that was a fantastic yeah. addition. Nobody else does it except Matt, Lan Matt Landers here in WA. Yeah. Then you had the lady who makes jam. The guy here that was seeing the bees, the guy who makes honey. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the man's name. Jeff. Uh, Jeff yeah. Uh, uh, things yeah. like that. Why do you take such a big buzz in bringing community back? Well, you know, people are really interested in, um, you know, their food, um, what are we eating, what are we putting in our, our bodies, um, and, and people are actually interested to see that honey really does come from bees that are local here in WA. Real bees. Real real bees. You know, it doesn't come out of a jar, it actually comes out of a hive. Um, as I said, with the, the jam, people are in, interested in preservatives, how we grow our food. So, you know, those skills are supposedly trendy and everybody wants to know about them. Well, if they really are that trendy, then let's start developing do, it. Do you think as a society we've sort of outgrown ourselves and now we're, coming, we're going back to basics where we all had a lot of fun? Like as a kid, I remember going to the Hyde Park Festival and it used to be just a big thing. Now you go there and it's just a little corner of the park. We've lost that sense of community, and I think what you guys do is amazing. Yeah, thank do you. Do you get a lot of pleasure? And Ryan, you're a young guy. Do you find it's amazing to do these things? I know you organise it and you're paid to work at cars and all that, but how do you find Because I see a buzz in you when you yeah. organise events. Well, I, I, I think it's a great, great thing to be part of. Before I worked um, with the society, I, I have to say, you know, my knowledge in gardening and, and cooking was completely Making unavailable. <laughs> but, Chef um, Dale, amazing. I have just come to, to really, you know, be part of everything that the society do, you know. I'm, occasionally I'll sit back and I'll, and I'll knit while we watch a movie at home or I'll, um, you know, today I'm going home to get in the garden and, and start doing some stuff that I learnt at one of last week's events where we had a, um, a horticulturalist mm. come in and talk to us. So it does, it, it, um, it really embraces different elements of... And, and you know what I found, even for Diane, there's life after cars, because I think I've got a, a little <laughs> clip. I was actually quite amazed. I, I overlooked it. sit back, relax and enjoy the ride and let me tell you about a place we call Morley. My stomping grounds, the place that I roam. Cliché, but it's true, no place like home. My name is Diane, I'm from Beckenham. <laughs> <laughs> but I can rap and I can make jam. <laughs> But she has a lot of fun. You had a good time that night. And, you know, you made That's that up very viral. quickly. I reckon it will, if, only if you put it on your Facebook, of course. But uh, thank you very much. Is there anything you want to just let people know about the sure. show, etc.? What yeah. do people need to do if they want to get involved? OK. The whole purpose of running those the night and the series of workshops we've got coming up is about giving people the information and the power and the knowledge to have a go, participate. If they want to know something about how to enter the show, get in touch with us or get in touch with the local agricultural society all over Australia. It doesn't have to just be Cannington. And we'll tell them what they need to know. Schedule comes out 1st of August. It's a few weeks away yet. But if you're interested, jump on our website, send us an email and, and we'll post some information out to you. Fantastic. And Ryan, just quickly, the type of um, workshops that you run, just very, very, very quickly. Yeah, we've got, to... we've got baking coming up, we've got beer brewing, we've got floral art and machine knitting. Unfortunately, when this goes to air, we will have already had the floral art, but you can hop on our website There's and check out everything we've got to go. Can I say, folks, is understating it. There's heaps of stuff to do. <laughs> if you can't get it from your own area, get it from Canning because they do a great job. Thank you to the Thank guys you. from Car Please check out our website for more details, thecouch.com.au. Thank you to Diane. Thank you to Ryan, as always. A pleasure to have you here. You. And we'll see you right after the break. We've got uh, Bitchin coming up next. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. At Telstra, we're listening. And so are we here at Bitchin. We listen to you because Perth, Australia, New Zealand, 
you listen to us and you watch us, hopefully, as well. <laughs> Welcome back to our bitches for this session. Thank you very much. On the couch, we've got Cameron Kippen. Hello. Welcome back. Nice to have you back. Nat Foster, see you there boogieing away. I Welcome love back. a bit of boogie action. And talking about boogie, the boogie Hello, man himself. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Hello. good thing. I, 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 must say, I must say, it was great to see the Fred Mafrica dancer. I know. It must cost well. you a fortune to get this kind of talent on your show because the last time I saw you dancing was in a club. And it oh. had this long pole. I don't know what oh, pole Yeah, when you pole You got dancing, quite high, didn't you? I can go higher than most well, of the other Well, you should have seen Ted when he landed on the pole once. <laughs> <laughs> you, you... I think I let... I, I don't have trouble getting up. I have trouble getting down. I don't down. remember we your have... face. Is but... that your problem, Ted? <laughs> you heard her problem? I showed you my best side. Yeah. Oh, have wow. you ever had the problem of getting up? Oh. Or getting anyway, down? Well, you I don't know what you're talking night. about. <laughs> okay. Well, you will know. Today we're going to talk about a couple of topics. It's nice to have our A-team back. A couple of topics today. We're going to talk about politics. Now, everybody knows the budget has, has been handed down a few weeks ago. It wasn't the best budget, and it wasn't all that came out that really scared me. And I don't know about the panel. We'll, we'll ask your opinion in a moment. But I think it was more that Tony Abbott made such a big thing for three years, rubbishing the Labor government for their lies on carbon tax and everything else that they, he supposedly thought they lied and told us that he will be a government that says what it does and does what it says. But... We may not think that that's the case. Let's have a quick look at this clip and then we'll come back and talk to our bitchin team. I want to be known as a Prime Minister who keeps commitments. I appreciate that the uh, trust that the public have in Prime Ministers and other significant members of Parliament has been trashed because this government, this Prime Minister and his predecessor have been just appalling, scandalous. Uh, at making promises and not keeping them, whether it be the no carbon tax promise, whether it be the surplus promise. Uh, these people have been hopeless at maintaining the public's trust. I want to restore it. There you go. You've, you've watched the clip. We won't show the whole thing. It's off YouTube for people who want to watch it. It's under phony Tony. Now, we're not saying anything about that. But have a look for yourself. Now, I'm a conservative. I've made that point very many times on this show. But even as a conservative, I'm disappointed that my conservative prime minister has come back on us and, <laughs> like, like a, can I say, like, a, oh, I love innocence. Like reverb, <laughs> it's come back and it's bit us on the bottom where he's attacking so many things he promised not to do. Ted, do you want to give your view on what's going on? Well, what do you I, think? I, a lot of people aren't aware that that uh, the prime minister had his fingers crossed at the time when he oh, made those promises. That's why. And we all oh, I know, know what you mean. That if you have your fingers why? crossed, it's okay. It's true. And, and another thing, Barnaby Joyce has mm. said this, and I quote, uh, Tony Abbott has shown the courage of Winston Churchill and John F. Kennedy. And I can see the PM practising his, his uh, statesmanship, uh, <laughs> saying things like, uh, don't ask what uh, I can do for you, ask what you can do for me. A and the other one from, yep. um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the old bloke who oh, yeah. smokes cigars. No, 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 <laughs> not, no, not Matthias. Not Matthias. Uh, Winston. <laughs> Winston Churchill. Oh, Winston. He wants and, to be like And him. he was doing the Winston because, John uh, Howard's middle name was Winston mm. and uh, Tony could be his love child for all I know but he <laughs> has been looking in the mirror and can you have a close up for this one uh, he's yeah, been yeah. saying things like we'll fight Bill Shorten in our lycra we'll fight him in our budgies we will never surrender and his final <laughs> comment are you ready for this? Yes <laughs> Oh, I hate that. I subscribe to that. Like oh, that. Oh. I could imagine Cameron would like the old... Oh, the Minister but for Women, really? Nat, what do you think about this whole... He made a promise before the yes. election. You know what he did with Julia Gillard and yes. Kevin Wright. What do you make of it now? How do you I say to the Australian people, don't blame me because I didn't vote for him. I just, look, he's a politician. Why is everyone so surprised he's done a backflip? Do I mean, you are generally you're I genuinely surprised. I am surprised, surprised because I genuinely gave him an opportunity to prove that he was going to do what right. he say and say what he does. And, and look, I, I give him credit on some of the things he wants to do because mm. I don't think they're that bad. But I think the things such as pensions, uh, he's scaring the community, the, the vulnerable community, the poor, the unemployed, the disability pensioners. The, they're the, the ones that need the money. And, and I find it unusual yeah. that he's tackled the people that can least afford his uh, taxes the petrol excise, all these things. Well, there were no messiahs, Fred. You know, this is where I think people get sucked in thinking that uh, someone like Tony Abbott making all these promises mm. pre, uh, that this will happen, but there are no messiahs. Do you think, Cameron, he's going to suffer for this? Do you reckon it's going to... Yes, I know that the, yeah. the Senate's not going to pass any of his radical changes. Uh, they'll threaten that, yes, certainly, and that'll shake a, a lot of um, boots. Uh, yeah, the thing is, he's a soundbite master who's a bit of a twit. 
to be honest. <laughs> mm. Now, to be fair, I think probably there are strings behind them being operated, mm. and that's even more alarming because you're not looking at the main man, you're looking at a voice mm -hmm. yeah. for do, something do you think that's behind. Do that Joe Hockey has a bit to do with this, that he's, he's suffering he's donut withdrawals? He's manoeuvring I think himself. that's what he is. No, he's suffering donut and uh, <laughs> he really is in chock well, withdrawals. Well, he was smoking rings, but <laughs> and, I think the rings look, were cigar rings. All, all of us who know, who've tried to lose weight from time to time, <laughs> and know how successful. nasty and miserable we've become. <laughs> and, so, well, he's lost so much weight, <laughs> mm. you know, and, and he misses that, that pie and sausage roll <laughs> at three... <laughs> Uh, cream donuts for lunch. We yeah. really does. Yeah. Do you? Do you <laughs> expect, it's 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 can I ask you an individual? Do you expect that? Is it time for politicians to to do what they say and say what they do? Is it time for no matter what the cost, no they matter never, what the they, budget? They never will. But should they? No. See, see, uh, should we have a contract with them that says if you don't keep your promise, you sign a contract, and if you don't keep it within six months, if you break but it, you're out. They, they won't do it. But they won't do it. See, see, see that's it. You know, but they should go. We they go. The people. <laughs> I mean, look I'm what happened in Thailand. I'm in demand, but when I'm in government... <laughs> yeah. Should the army come in and take over? Oh. <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm, I'm asking the question. <laughs> no. Are we too soft in this? I mean, we've got a wonderful political system. Don't get me wrong. I'm being humorous there. Because no one was... <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine the I'm army. I'm about that, aren't you? Because you he has to tell us he's being humorous. I'm always going to duck behind the desk. Because I think with our army and the way the cuts are coming, oh. there wouldn't be enough of them to take over the government. But well, the question is... Do you think this is going to be a long-term sufferance for Tony Abbott? Will he lose by not keeping his promises? If he comes out of this and decides to go, OK, the party... I heard today a lot of the senators are saying, back off, Prime Minister, we don't like it. Mm. The electorates are telling us they don't like the lies, they don't like the, the perception that we've lied. Back off. Now there's talks about Christopher Pine watering down the education thing. The man I want to give a wedgie to. Now, you heard what Christopher Pine, for example, said in Parliament. Wouldn't you want to give him a... Wouldn't you want mm. to give Christopher Pine a wedgie? <laughs> well, who's Christopher Pine? Did, did Christopher wedgie. Pine's you know education minister from Adelaide. Right. Now, he's Is the he man... Is Because I give him a wedgie. Well, I wouldn't cute. call him cute. <laughs> but he was the man that was caught <laughs> in Parliament dropping the C word. He oh. called Bill Shorten allegedly, allegedly. a C-word. Oh, I heard that. And then he changed it to I'll grub. And yet everybody in Australia saw the clip and it actually was the C-word. It wasn't alleged that he said the C-word. Yes. And, and what, really I, what I'm saying to you is, are we sick of our politicians? Are we sick of our politicians lying, misleading us and never committing to what they say they're going to do? They're going to do it. Well, uh, they're going to do it yeah. regardless. Yeah. Would I mean, Tony Abbott survive, Ted? Um, well, I... Mm, He's looking more and more like a donut to Joe Hockey. What do you yeah. reckon's going to happen, Nat? Julie Bishop will come in, and then I'm going to move to New Zealand. Well, I think if Julie Bishop comes in, remember that promise there'll be no Australian child living in poverty? Oh. They won't be, because they'll all be gone. Yeah, Joe Hockey, leave them. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you, Cameron? What have you got to add to this? What do you reckon is going to happen in the long term? Do you think I, the budget? Well, not I go think the thing is, that it's, it, what's being cried out for is a statesman in politics, mm. and unfortunately, there's nobody there to take over. No, it's not. So no. we'll so have the so same old. So you don't old, think Joe Hockey's manoeuvring his way to becoming leader if, if Tony Abbott's dropped? Because he of may his well be, but again, he's one of the same. Do chameleon you think they're going to drop Tony Abbott, or do you think he's pretty safe? I think People will forget. Abbott. My. Uh, opinion is Abbott will be there for as long as those behind he him want to be He seems to have the party there. support. And I think also there, there seems the to be... one by one vote, remember, against yeah. Malcolm Turnbull. I think there's a perception there that people will forget three years on. But oh, I yeah. think yeah. a lot of his policies that he's brought in in this budget won't happen because the Greens, the Labor Party and the PUP party aren't going to pass it. And Tony Abbott will be able to say, well, I didn't get those reforms done because they didn't allow it. And there'll be his scapegoat to have a huge budget deficit. Yep, yep, That's what I yep. think. Uh, That's just what I think. Just, just really, watch yeah. his fingers or his wink. OK. Oh, I hate the wink. I hate when he's I winking. Wink. I hate the wink. Did you, can I quickly just ask about that oh. wink? Did you think there was... And honestly, did you think there was anything in it? The lady, the 67-year-old lady that spoke to him on the phone on the ABC yeah. that suggested that she was doing a sex a phone call oh, to make mild. money, <laughs> do you think that the wink that Tony had... Was well, it such a big deal? Because well, I personally didn't well, think it was. Well, I can tell you what happened. Yes. What, what happened, he was, he was being a bit of a bloke. Okay. Yes, and, you know, was. and he was sort of having... You know, we yeah. both were, work radio. You're having... You know, with, you don't think there's a camera on you and go, wink. Yeah, you know, exactly. that's, a, yeah, that's you between do. you and me. And, you do, because and, the camera, yeah. you don't know the camera's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's sort of set, you know, make, making him feel that the interviewer 
is that he's on his yes. side. You know, mm. exactly. that's what it was. But but actually, what happened? A, a blind horse walked into the studio, <laughs> and he meant to give it a nod, but he gave it a wink. Yeah, but, the, but the was the it problem, such a big deal? Problem, Did you think it was a big deal? Those who live by the sword die by the sword. That's it. These are yeah. people who no, live. I, I, I don't in want a prime public. minister who does that. Yeah, they live. Could you imagine the Julia media. Gillard doing that? No, she never no. would have got away well, with it. Well, again, circumstances are, and I dare say that there's, uh, you know, there's times when things happen. Could you imagine John Howard doing that? Well, again, the problem is you don't really have a generation who live in the media and he okay. does mm. and at one moment he's a soundbite king and all the rest of it and the next minute he's misbehaving he's very loose isn't he? he's not as controlled as what people think that's he is. what will hang he's not, he hasn't got the restraint of tony uh, of john howard or kevin rudd or even julia uh, i have to say julia gillard i still think as a labor prime minister she's probably the best example of a good prime minister yep. even though she had a bad party to work with well, i still I liked her as a peer i think her being a woman so didn't I... help yeah <laughs> and, I, and i think she'll be remembered in the future as the prime minister that didn't make that many lies. He only had one carbon tax. <laughs> Tony Abbott's got like about 20 of them. But let's move on to the next okay. topic. Um, the way society lives these days. Do we all agree that Facebook, social media, kids hide behind computers, kids don't even leave the bedroom? I know in my case, I use an example, my two um, children, my, my sister's kids. Children? No, 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 that, that would, that would be, that would be my nieces yeah. and nephews. You heard it here my, first. My mother would visit my sister's kids. And they won't even leave the room. They're on the computer. They will just you, you hear them from afar saying, hello, Grandma. Have a look at this clip, and then I'll ask for your feedback. It's called a Look Up. I have 422 friends, yet I'm lonely. I speak to all of them every day, yet none of them really know me. The problem I have sits in the spaces between looking into their eyes or at a name on a screen. I took a step back and opened my eyes. I looked around and realised that this media we call social is anything but when we open our computers and it's our doors we shut. All this technology we have, it's just an illusion. Community companionship, a sense of inclusion. Yet when you step away from this device of delusion, you awaken to see a world of confusion. A world where we're slaves to the technology we mastered. Where information gets sold by some rich, greedy bastard. A world of self-interest, self-image, self-promotion. Where we all share our best bits, but leave out the emotion. We're at our most happy with an experience we share. But is it the same if no one is there? You missed out on, uh, in between that clip, Liam, the director would have loved it. Uh, Ted got up and gave one of our crew a big kiss. Yeah, well, he's a bit stressed. And it wasn't me. I needed to be de-stressed. Can I ask, I'll start with Cameron this time on the yes. other side. That clip, what does it tell you, Cam? It tells me that people are worried about what kids do. Um, it so happens to be electronic uh, gizmos and so forth, and not without reason. But the... Is there truth in what they're saying, that everything's now behind closed doors, reality is all through no, a screen? No, I must admit, Fred, I think this is a bit of a ruse in the sense that ever since there are children, there's always been concern about what they do and what they don't do and how well they grow up, etc. Especially mm. if the bedroom door is shut. Well, that's right. And so well, subsequently, the there's a lot of fear. There is complications, mm. there's no question of doubt about it, and I think it, probably the internet should be for adults only, but that said, Isn't it this funny is that that clip's called Look Up? It's on, it's on YouTube at the moment, folks, but isn't it amazing that a young guy has actually gone out and done that? I've always had the, the conflict when I talk about social media, that the young people are saying, you're an oldie, you don't know what we're talking about. Mm. And yet that guy would be about 20, I would say, <laughs> and he's saying it. Now, I don't think he's paid because it looks like a personal thing he's put it, together. It is, it is a personal thing, but I find ironic that he's saying, look up. So in other words, put your phones down, put your PCs down, your tablets down, look up, and yet it's being streamed through social media. Yeah, but the thing is, he's probably a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. You're alluding to alluding? You know, that famous I Socrates see. thing, oh, I see. where Socrates, whatever he said, I can't repeat it because it was in ancient Greek, and yeah. my ancient Greek's a little... Was that one of the Centre-forwards yeah. Brazil, no, haven't had. No, he basically said the children of today, mm. and it's the same thing over and over again. See, I find with, with social media, I'm not on Facebook because I, I feel that, that probably Putin would want to befriend me. Mm. And, 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 and Julie... Uh, uh, what have you got there? Ted, Ted's name? holding... Uh, Cameron's <laughs> holding something. I'm on Facebook right now. That's what uh, Cameron's got to... <laughs> Do you know, I don't think this is just for children. 
Yep. The way that I, I actually read it, because the story is about a guy who, you know, there's two different circumstances where he's lost mm. and he actually sees a woman on the street, sees her and says, oh, can you help me? They hook up, they have kids, grandkids, etc. And then they take it back to if he'd been on his phone on Google Maps, he wouldn't, he had his head down, didn't see the woman. So I think it's actually for adults as well. And I must admit mm. that when I saw this, when I first saw it, which was, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I put my phone down for a yeah. well, good time. It minutes. makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> it <laughs> does. Do you know in what? Bali, it gives you some morals, but doesn't it? Something it, about it the does. age. But in, in Bali, and I, and I don't think it's just for kids because mm. I'm a Facebooker. I'm not a tweeter because I'm too old for that, but I am a Facebooker. But when I was in Bali, I thought, I'm not going to go on Facebook. And then I was sitting by the pool, and I had the pool, and I had the bing tang, took a photo just to rub it in my friends' faces back in Perth. So I do, but I'm going out for dinner tonight, and this is what we're going to do. We're all putting our phones in the middle. Of the of the mm. of the table where we're eating, and that's it. Nobody's touching their phones. Not oh, even to take a, a photo of the food. There's a TV show. The first to touch the phone pays, pays for, for the it. meal. That's a good there's idea. a TV show on Channel 10 called Wonderland, and the, they all live in an apartment block. And there's about eight neighbours. And the great thing about that show is that it's been out for a couple of years now. But they actually have dinner at, at a different person's house yep. every week, and they all put their phones into a great tub. Idea. And nobody's allowed to mm. touch the phone mm. for the whole night. Well, well I'm, I'm not saying anything, and there's a reason, see, because all my friends are recording this and they're going to put it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and they've all said, I bet Ted will talk his head off. Is it the popularity, <laughs> Ted? Is it the popularity well, my that makes... popularity? Well, your popularity is already there. Yeah. I mean, you're, you are Mr Facebook. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, I've got Facebook's got a picture of Ted. Yeah. <laughs> but what is, what is it? Yeah, is Ted. It, what, yeah. are we, we look at that, and I look at the, the comments about the elderly, how we've forgotten the elderly, we've forgotten the children, we've forgotten how to party, yeah. we've yeah. forgotten how to talk. Uh, are we basically just saying it? Are they just we're, words? We're just, look, I, I, I don't Nothing think we, we have. I think it's just part of the way people communicate yes. today. Mm. Uh, my greatest concern over all this is how people believe they have confidentiality. Yeah. Mm. When oh. they're on these ho, 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 you do Rubbish. not. Rubbish. I mean, that, that's my greatest fear. Yep. Uh, people on Facebook, I think you'd be surprised, and as you mentioned that, mm. people even older than yourself mm. are on Facebook yes, now. Yes, they are. And younger people, and like yourself, yes, are you. saying, we won't go on Facebook anymore because mm. it's been taken over and by these people who take photos of sausages, eggs and chips and in a restaurant about... and yeah, send it, it to their sausage. friends. That's that was I a good sausage. It, yeah. It's yeah. always good to take a picture of your sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ted doesn't know which way to look today. But can I just say, <laughs> and he looked down, which was I'm the funny thing. But can I just say to you, I, I was telling Cameron before we came to air today, I had a, someone created a fake Twitter account in my name. And, uh. and the, the funny thing was, they didn't need any ID to say that they were me, yeah. but I needed ID to prove that it was me telling them to, to bring it down. Isn't that crazy? So isn't that funny the way it works? Yeah. Just quickly, I know we're mm. wrapping up, we've gone a huge overtime today because it's been great. <laughs> Ted, high point and low point for the month for well, you? Well, uh, the, the low point uh, certainly has to be the, the racism directed at Adam Goods. Oh, again, uh, again. You know, I mean, we don't need that. but. On, but they did do something about it, which is good. But That's the good, good thing is, I actually am achieving the biblical age of three score and ten. And you know what the Whoa. good news is? Is I didn't wake up dead this morning. That's good. <laughs> You're still breathing? Somebody oh, give me a mirror so to make sure he's still thought. breathing. <laughs> Trust me, he can move a little bit closer to you and give you that heavy breathing on your oh, ears. Oh, I see. Is he alive? Mm. Mm. Oh, well, that's lovely. Yeah. Hey. That's why I sit in the middle. I, 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 had, two boys. I had to put $20 exactly. in. <laughs> put you gave in him an open mouth kiss. I, I had to put $20 in your brazzy <laughs> ear last time I did that. Oh, I well, you put it in my knickers this time. <laughs> well, I offered to do the shopping for Ted, but he said, give me the 20 bucks and I'll do my own shopping. And, <laughs> and he obviously went next door where it was cheaper. <laughs> Nat, can you tell me your high point and low point? For I was going to say, oh, because I was in Seminyak and Bali, fantastic. Ooh. And the low point was... You're was tan. Thank you. Low point was going back to work, you know, the alarm clock going off. But then I thought of one the other day. I've started this thing where I'm boxing and, and losing weight, right? Mm. So I went into the wardrobe last weekend and I thought, oh, a pair of shorts, because it's a bit warm. A pair of shorts, pulled them down. I haven't worn these shorts for probably about a year. So I put them on, did them up, did all this shopping, okay? And then got back it. So that's my high point, because they fit really yeah. well. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm so excited, because I haven't worn them because they were too small. So I went into all these shops, Ikea, we tried out some beds, we went everywhere, Myers. Got back in the car after two hours of shopping and then all of a sudden put the air conditioner on and then I felt this gush of wind oh, right down my nethers. <laughs> Looked and I've had a blowout. This is why, and I went, oh, that's no. why I didn't use these shorts. I have no seam in oh. my crutch. Oh, yeah. It was oh. like, it was, I oh, seriously, I took a picture and put it on. I know, right? 
And oh. I had knickers on, thank goodness I had. And oh, they were my so, good. They so were unusual. My, they so were my, unusual. If it had been washing day, I would have had nothing. <laughs> no, come on. But I, they know were your, my... I know your mum, and she would say, never go out without clean knickers on in yes. case you're hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, and they yeah. were my good knickers, because every so often I wear my ones with the and elastic that's broken. your point? <laughs> My low point was actually thinking I still have to go to Coles and do the shopping. So I was walking. I was but everything's walking down, with down, my... down at Coles, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's true. It that is very good, yeah, Fred. That's probably I know why I got a discount when thing. I was at the checkout. I you went, let six piano. <laughs> so that was my low point, realising that I'd blown my gusset out. Thank you. And Cameron, good. can you wind it up Very please? briefly, my high point was the Eurovision Song Contest, oh, which I'm so pleased the Australia attractive. doesn't have. And my low point was I missed her knicker list. <laughs> <laughs> I but put it on Facebook. The great thing is, <laughs> I was just about to say, you could always do what it, you know, look up, I look down. I took a photo, put it on Facebook just <laughs> Thank you me. very much. Did Can you I just... really? That's <laughs> worse than sausages, eggs and chips. <laughs> We've had, a, we've had a bit of a buffet <laughs> today on the show. Thigh. Thank you to Cameron Kippen for being on the show today. I love pleasure. having you here. Thank you to Natalie Foster for being here today. Thank you. And thank you to the thank legend you, Ted Bull. Where can mm. we catch you at the... Oh, Curtain FM. Yes. On Plus the... I'm doing a, a play at um, the Camelot Theatre yes. uh, in early June. And please book because it's an awesome, awesome one. It's called? It's called Love Affair. L love Affair. I thought you were going to say Love Story, but it's well, Love Affair. No, no. Well, maybe, no, maybe it is. It's love is it a love story? It's no, it's not, it's not a love story. It's something about love and sausages. Well, to serve with love. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is bitching for another month here on The Couch. Thanks to our people. We'll take a break and be back with more of The Couch after this. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television around Australia, Foxtel, and of course uh, Face TV on the Sky Network in New Zealand, and of course if you're watching us online on The Couch website. Uh, today we're going to do our first uh, Polly Waffle for 2014. Now you know as a regular feature we had it on The Couch last year, and uh, we've got some new faces and we've got some people that have come back. Let me introduce our politicians today. We've got Senator Rachel Seward from The Greens. Welcome back, Rachel. It's a pleasure, thank you. Alan Eggleston from the Liberal Party, thank you and uh, welcome. My pleasure. Nice to have you here. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about the north of Very the state good. as well. And of course, Alana McTean and the new federal member for Perth in the Labor Party. Welcome back. Thank you very welcome much. Welcome back to Perth, should I say. Welcome back to Leaderville as well. And we're going to look forward to talking to all three of you today about the budget that was handed down by Tony Abbott, one that I can probably call as uh, not very popular out there in the public. And I'm going to start with maybe with Rachel. Just give me a minute and a half, Rachel, of your opinion on the budget, where we're going wrong, what we did right. Well, we've, I've just spent 10 days in estimates going through the budget, and I've got to say I'm pretty... I knew it was bad, but some of the things that came out of the estimates were pretty depressing. Impact on young people, for example, getting... Um, getting put onto no income support, work for the dole, ill thought through. There's some um, perverse incentives in there, and it's it's actually going to be forcing young people, um, basically, I think, onto the streets because if you've got no income, you just can't afford to to even pay your rent. And then you've got impacts on people with disability, students, um, people on the on the age pension. So significant impact across a range of. Uh, the community, and I think that it's going to have very significant consequences for the government if they actually don't realise how uh, poorly it's being received in the community. Is there anything in the budget that you actually liked or, or would consider maybe passing if, well, you, if it, you could? The overwhelming message we're getting from not just our members but the broader community is block the, block the budget and bust the budget, don't support it. And so it would be very hard to find anything that's good in there compared to the overwhelming mean and, and what a lot of people are saying, cruel measures. Fair enough. Thank you, Rachel. Alan, you're representing the government today. You're from the Liberal Party. It must be a hard time for you, Alan, to, to sit in between a Labor politician and a Green. How do you think the, the budget went down from, from your point of view? Well, the budget was designed to call attention to the fact that Australia's spending more than it's earning, and like a family, 
who is spending more than it's earning, you have to cut expenditure and have to pull in, in uh, what you're doing. And so what this budget is designed to do is alert people to the level of debt and to make them understand that we have to reduce debt and reduce spending. That's not to say the Australian economy is in trouble. We have a triple A rated economy. We're one of the few in the world with that sort of status. And we have, in fact, a low uh, debt to GNP ratio, but we've got to stop that ratio growing because Australia is spending beyond its limits, and that's what this budget's designed to do. Mm. Like a family budget, you can only spend what you have in the bank or in your paycheck, and we've got to have some financial discipline, and that's what this so budget is So you recognise it could be seen as a hard budget, but you're saying economic times call for it. Exactly. Nobody says it's a soft budget. It is a tough budget, but there's a good reason for it being so tough. And do you think that maybe the, the, the government's gone too far to being too tough? Out there in the community, what are you hearing? Well, obviously there are elements of the budget which aren't very popular, perhaps the co-payment, perhaps a few other things, but they're all um, issues which can be discussed and dealt with in the Senate. Um, there's room to negotiate, and I'm sure that's what the government will be doing. But overall, we have to have more fiscal discipline, and that is what Tony Abbott, Joe Hockey and Matthias Cormann are bringing to Australia, fiscal do discipline. Do you think they've sold it well, or do you think there could have been some improvement in the way that it was, the message came out? No, I think they presented the budget. There's always uh, discussion about the content of the budget. You can never please everybody. Once you start cutting programs, the people who are experiencing the impact of the cuts always say, why me? This is terrible. You shouldn't be doing this. And inevitably there's criticism. As so we're going to see this through yeah. and we'll end up with a, a sounder budget, a, a better fiscal management and Australia will keep its sounds AAA like the, credit rate. The government, Alan, sounds like they're looking at compromising and, and, di and discussing the issues with the other parties. Is that right? Well, Tony Abbott and Christopher Pine both said that last Saturday week, that uh, negotiations and compromises are possible, and I'm sure we'll see some of that happen in the next couple of weeks, especially in the Senate. All right, we'll touch more on that after the break. Alana McTiernan, from the Labor point of view, what do you think? Well, I think just what the people perceive out there in the community is quite right, that this budget just doesn't make sense. There's, as Alan has said, we've got three AAA credit ratings. We have a debt-to-revenue ratio that is the envy of the developed world. We've got a debt-to-revenue ratio of around 11%. You know, other developed countries like um, Germany and the United States all have in excess of uh, 50, 60, 70%. So, you know, just quoting the numbers, raw numbers of the level of our debt, is really very misleading. I mean, it'd be just like saying, Andrew Forrest, oh, you, Andrew Forrest, you shouldn't go out there and build, um, borrow a billion dollars to invest in an iron ore mine. Um, those figures would be horrific if it was, a, you know, Wilma, a little old pensioner from down the road in Leederville. But, you know, when you've got a big economy, a big investment, those gross numbers don't make any sense. So we've got tools <coughs> like the AAA credit rating, which is designed to give us a perspective about what those numbers mean. So we haven't got a budget crisis, but we do all agree that there does need to be um, strict fiscal management. We all agree with that. But what has driven people nuts about this budget is that it is so absolutely unfair. First, we've got the faux crisis, the faux crisis. And then when we do the analysis of which sectors of the community are bearing the brunt, it is the poor and the lower middle income groups that are overwhelmingly being required to make the sacrifice for the fiscal discipline. And then we've got, you know, things that, again that don't matter. We've, we've, got, we've got to make Medicare sustainable. Um, and so we've got to put in this co-payment, this very unfair co-payment. Um, and that money is not actually going to go into Medicare. It's going to go research into fund. a research fund. Do you so think how is that making Medicare sustainable. I mean, you're putting this into it. This is like the paid parental leave scheme. And this is the other thing that is driving people mad, is the contradictions here. We've got a cut back on family tax benefit. You lose your job and you're under 30. Six months you're on your own, mate. Six months, no matter how It's the perception you are that people are It's saying. not the perception, it is the reality. Well, at the moment and it hasn't happened, that's what I'm saying. And what's scaring people yep. is that 
they're seeing what the government's proposing it's and they know it's going to affect them. And, and the payment makes sense. I tend yes, to agree with both of you. It doesn't make sense. I agree with you both. I think, well, like I said at the start, uh, the budget is seen as being a very nasty budget. A lot of people make comments where the mean has come back into the mean test, the means test. Um, we're going to talk more about this with our members of parliament. If you want more information about the couch or you'd like to see this whole interview again, uh, this is how you do it. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchy and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. thecouch.com.au the budget's certainly getting conflict on the couch here. And we've got uh, three different... Uh, we've, I think the Labor and the Greens are more online with this one. And I think most of the public are seeing their point of view as being the right one. But uh, we'll let Alan explain where the government's going with this budget after the break when we continue with Polly Waffle. Stay with us. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television. Before the break, we spoke to our politicians. Let me introduce them again. We've got Rachel Seward from the Greens. We've got Alan Eggleston from the Liberal Party and Alana McTean, and the member for Perth uh, from the House of Representatives. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome back. Now, I'm going to go straight into this because I know we've only got a very short time. Higher education. Can I start with Rachel? How do you see the new the budget changes affecting Australia? Very significantly and... Senator Rhiannon um, launched a website, how will, how will the uni fees affect me? Affect me. Within 24 hours, she, there'd been a million hits on it. So, obviously, there's a lot of pe people really concerned about what the, the changes to um, higher ed are going to have. What are, the, what are the concerns? What are the, mainly the concerns? The, they're going to be the, paying more? They're going to be the, locked out? The high cost that some, some courses are doubling, some are even higher than that, and people are worried that they're going to be locked out um, because they've also... Um, got to survive. And They're universities have to be can charge time. whatever they like for exactly. courses. Exactly, and we're and people are uh, seeing that those on lower incomes, most vulnerable again, mm. are going to be the ones bearing the cost. Alana, can I ask you from a labour point of view about the education changes? Uh, look, I think they're very concerning. So they've they've cut the amount of money that goes to universities for each student. So even without the deregulation, the universities are going to have to have to mm. charge more. And, and we've now got, so we've got young people that are now going to be um, having to borrow more under their hex. So when they come out of university, they're going to debt. start off with these huge debts. They're changing the rate of repayment. They're lowering the threshold. So it's now only uh, $50,000 you have to start uh, repaying and they're increasing the indexation. So they're doing all of those things. Then on top of that, they are deregulating um, so that for the more, I guess you'd say, upmarket, more exclusive universities, maybe the Sandstone University is offering, those costs of those universities will go up. So your ability of, of an important principle has been in Australia mm. that you get into university and the, the university of your choice based on your capacity, based on your achievement. Um, and well, this is going to be turned around now and it will be based on your capacity to pay, your parents' capacity mm. to pay. So re very real concerns. And my concern too is mass the massive cuts to the CSIRO, to the uh, cooperative research centres. The modern economy needs government to invest in the new technologies. It doesn't come out of the, the internet. The touch screen, mm. Wi-Fi, we'll, the the, logger, the algorithm for we'll touch um, on that. We'll touch yeah, on that. All of that came out of government-funded research. And I think we uh, we all agree with you with that one. But, but I mean, we've got to understand higher... how profound this is. Look, this notion that mm. we hear every day in the parliament: just get out of the way. It's all just government's just got to get out of the way. But it's not no, going to happen. No, you actually need in scientific research, you need government at the core and the heart 
of that research. I think Rachel agrees with well, you. Yeah, uh, well, the other thing is about the, the higher ed cuts is the impact on women. So um, Lee Rhiannon's done some analysis and, and clearly shows that the impact on women is it going to be even more significant because women that come out of the workforce for most often um, when they're having children mm. and so that's going to impact on them even uh, even more. So okay. that's another unfair bit of budget. Do you like budget. anything about the higher education changes? Uh, say, for example, the HECS being available to TAFE students. That's a good move, isn't it? Well, there's some concerns there around as what well. that's going to also mean about access to TAFE courses as okay. well. Yeah, well, look, and I just because I did a, a piece on this in, in Parliament, I've been looking at mm. this. A lot of those, it's not just TAFE, it's all the vocational education mm. courses, and we know that there are a lot of Mickey Mouse courses mm. out around there. One of the things that the government has flagged, it's putting under review the one entity that is there trying to keep the standard up and ensuring mm. that if kids are going into signing up to a vocational education course, that there is actually some chance that they're going to learn something and they're going to have a skill that they are going to well, end up with. Otherwise, they'll be leaving these courses, again, with a huge debt and no... Alan, no... you sat there very quietly listening I to have, Alana and I to have, Rachel. What do you think? From a, it must be hard as a government member in the Senate because you're going to come up with the, the opposition parties having to pass these rules. How do you think, how hard is it going to be for you to accept these changes? Well, we go back to the basics. Australia was living way beyond its means. We were paying for things on the credit card, which we couldn't really afford. And this government's bring, bringing us back to the to fiscal responsibility that we must but you're not only at revenue measures. we must we must only do what we can afford. And unfortunately, education is an area I'll ask where you in a moment, these expenses have got out of control. And do you think paying paternity so leave is part of that? How that, would you... Let's, that, let's let, leave we, that for another we'll, minute. We'll let Alan have his say. The fact we'll, remains we'll that it's all about fiscal responsibility. Indeed, um, Australia's been very cheap in mm. terms of tertiary education, a cheap country, cheap fees. But um, we've, got to, we've got to bring in these extra dollars to cover the debt okay. which Labor was building up month by month and let's, we've got to now on. exercise fiscal control. I'll move on and I'll let you discipline. have the first say. In health, the $7 co-payment to Medicare, a lot of people said it's the end of Medicare, it's the start of destroying Medicare. Alan, where do you see the government's um, way of introducing a co-payment being a better way? The co-payment is designed to make people aware of the cost of health services and, and again it's a matter of fiscal responsibility so that people don't go to the doctor every day um, when they perhaps don't need to. Um, and I'm sure that this whole system will, will be administered with care. Um, I know Peter Dutton's had a lot of research done on it. And, um, it's not very popular, Alan, is it? It's a not lot very of people popular, like but it. changes like that are never very popular. If you've been used to going to the doctor and not paying anything, you need to understand there are costs involved, you're dealing with a professional service, you're getting... Uh, various other services provided, like pathology and so on. And I think it's important to be aware, for the public to be aware of a cost. Mm. And it's not a huge cost, and the government believes that this is a reasonable fee. Do you think it's fee. important, Alan, as well, that the government ministers that are speaking on this know how the policy will work? Because I know we've had some confusion as well. How many visits do you have to have before you stop paying? How is it going to affect people in public hospitals? Can I ask and Alana uh, first well, and then Rachel? Well, look, I, I do think also that the point that really needs to be remembered here is that Mr Abbott, before the election, said there will be no, there will be no surprises, there will be no be cuts to health fairs. And, and you can't claim now that they didn't know the state of the budget. We have the PIFA, we have the Treasury, and was said in Parliament the other day, yes. before the election, all the books are made public, not, not put together by the government, but put together by the Treasury. How, how do you so answer that, So there is Alan? a sense of complete betrayal. How do you answer that? What Alana's saying is, is quite true. I, I remember a government, that, uh, an opposition that said, we will do as we say, we will say what we do. Uh, we will be a government of no surprises, no shocks. Mm. We will tell the truth, unlike Julia Gillard and Kevin Rudd. Do you find it hard as a member of the Liberals saying, oh, we're looking a little bit uh, not telling the truth ourselves? Not at all. The, 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 before the election we said we'd exercise fiscal responsibility and it is true that the pre-election financial documents um, showed the state of affairs that we were in and the state of affairs that we were in was that we were bo borrowing hundreds of millions of dollars every week to pay our bills and this government has addressed that by introducing 
some cost cuts and by introducing some fees. So we are exercising fiscal responsibility and that is the only way we're going to keep our triple gold credit rating and it's the only way that it, Australia it can seem, go forward. Alan, it does seem to me that everything's about fashion. money. I, I do understand you're saying everything's about, about the budget, money. it's about but the cricket. Like a right. family, you can't live beyond your no, means I understand, but for too long and the, the government the is running the Australian gone? family. But you look at how you're going to raise the money. In our system. Rachel, we, we you didn't the look at okay, Rachel, how you're going to raise revenue. It was all about cutting. The Commission of Audit was all about cutting. What about the mining tax? Actually putting a, an effective mining tax in place. So what about the carbon it. price? You, you, you're caning but, that. What about the enormous subsidies you give to big mining on fossil fuels? All areas where you can make money, and we've identified others. In terms of the health co-payment, when uh, Senator Denatale, who was chairing the inquiry into the Commission of Audit, asked Tony Shepherd about that, there was no evidence. They could not come up with any evidence that showed bringing in a co-payment would, in fact, reduce the number of people um, so going to the doctor. So you're against it, Rachel. Your co-payment, you're not going to put it through. No, you're we're not. not. Allowed to go and through. Labor's not going to support it. No, and can I just... Well, yeah. can I just say something? Rachel mentioned the mining tax. The mining tax was a complete waste of time, raised but no she's money. saying we should fix we it. We should fix it. Well, There's plenty of ways to fix it. What it does is act as a disincentive, and we have to understand yeah. that Australia's not the only place in the world with minerals. West Africa, for example, has got oh, a lot that, of minerals. That's but would you compromise that? Please let me time. say we'll what I'm Alan. saying. There's an enormous amount of investment in West Africa now. For the, the, these mining companies are international and they can decide where they put their developments. If we have a mining tax uniquely in the world, then they're not going to come here. They'll go to West Africa, they'll go to Canada. Yes. I've already been told that there'll be no more LNG plants in Australia because Canada even is 20% mm. cheaper than we are. The United States is about 60% cheaper. I, I you, we have to get out of this naive little world of Ireland or Australia I'm, I'm gonna, and see the broader picture. And the mining tax certainly is a disincentive to investment. I'm going to ask some quick investment. questions, Alan, because I, I know we're running out. We've only got three minutes. I'm going to ask a quick comment from each of the people. Uh, we've already agreed that the co-payment is not going to be supported by Labor and the, and the Greens. The, the, the government wants it passed and they're not going to buckle on this. The co-payments yeah. there as part of your feature, is that right? As I understand it, yes. yes. And you're not going to support it in That's Labor? That's right. But can I just explain yep. what Labor is going to do? We are going to pass a thing called supply. Okay. And these are the appropriation bills. Okay. Because we, as a matter of principle, have the view that the government that is elected in the lower house needs to be able to govern yep. and they need supply for that. So even though those supply bills contain many of the carts to mm. um, science and that we disagree with, uh, we think it's important for stability of government. We don't always see the Conservatives taking that same okay. focus. But we so we'll, but there are all those pieces of legislation then, subsequent pieces of legislation that are need for the GP tax, um, the that you'll need for the family tax benefits. Cuts, uh, arts, those are ones that energy. you'll see. We, we've supported. We'll support the. Um, Will you let the carbon tax go? Oh, Will absolutely Labor not. Allow no, that's no? and that is a very important principle. We are totally committed to pricing carbon. But you're going to stand by Julie Gillard's carbon tax and Kevin Rudd's carbon. You're well, not let we, it go. we are we are absolutely happy no to matter, come to an no agreement. No matter how many jobs it costs. Come to an agreement yep. that we move immediately to an ETS. Absolutely happy to move to to, uh, to an emissions, emissions. trading mm. scheme. Uh, and if that okay. is able to be negotiated, we certainly let, would. Let me give the last a couple of minutes, one minute, in fact, to Rachel and to Alan. Rachel, the changes to social welfare, social security, a new start, the unemployed having to wait six months. We certainly won't be supporting that. When you, when I was asking in estimates about that, asked about how you would think somebody on no income would even pay the co-payment. Government had absolutely no response. Well, the they question, hadn't even thought about it. The question was asked, how would people on unemployment that weren't going to get unemployment the, be surviving? I mean. And the government said and they need to earn or learn. And not everyone's able to do that. Well, when you've been retraining, training, training, and you still can't get work... Alan, do you hear this? I, mean, I know, Alan... But, but you, look, can I just say, it's even worse than this, because it's people that... You might have been working, you lose your job, you're laid off through no fault of your own, you haven't been sitting around bludging you on the doll, and you've got no yeah, capacity... Do you agree with me, guys, that maybe it hasn't been sold properly? Because it seems no, to be when... How do, you no, sell, it's, how do you sell... It's a lemon. A lemon. How do you put... You can't put lipstick on a pig, as they what say. You, what, that's an old saying. It's come and back again. it's not focused on the long-term unemployed. Alan it's must be the, the hardest medium. person to have a word here. Alan, I'll, I'll let you finish off quickly. Well, I want to go back to the carbon tax yep. and to the emissions trading scheme. The carbon tax is a disincentive to Australian industry. The, the emissions trading call, scheme does not reduce emissions like that, in Alan. Australia at all. What about renewable energy? All you energy? do is transfer the emissions to a 
and Indonesian rainforest. Both of both of these these it's, things are Pat, uh, Alan, you, negatives you, for the Australian economy. Do you and I think, Alan? Don't Alan, Alan do you think there's a lot of people out there? A lot of scientists. They're not lines I've been given to say. They're things I believe very. Do you sincerely. think cutting back on the CSIRO is probably not a good way of saying you support the environment? I mean, it's probably well, not the image that you want to be seen with. I I look. We have a debt problem. We've got to address it. And hard decisions. So you're saying are everything the government's doing is all related to the credit card, the debt. It is. Everything's focused. It's not about being mean spirited. It's not about changing it our is. culture. You can't live in terror. It is about, about changing about our understanding culture. Understanding what we need to do to the make Labor our economy Party strong. The Labor Party is living in a, in no, a utopian no, no. fairy I think it's, world. It's, I think it's a it very good argument. Alan, and I we think got three AAA credit ratings. Something Mr. Howard yeah, never well, we're got. We got three AAA credit ratings. I'm going to ask. I know we've we've spoken for such a long time, and yet there's so much to talk about. Just quickly. Thank you very much for coming in. Rachel, in a word, yes or no to this budget? Will there be anything that will go through? It's a no. No from you. Alan, do you hope that they negotiate with you? I think there will be negotiations. And will you come back and talk to me about the North on your own? I will. I'd love I'd to. I'd love to have you back because I know you do some great work up there and there's a white paper you want to talk about. We'll yes, have I you will. back and you can talk about that. And Alana McTiernan, where do you think we're going with this budget? I think the vast back majority the of these ne negative um, um, provisions will be wiped off. They won't go back to the polls. I mean, they're not no, they completely dare. stupid. Um, so I just think we'll see a very modified uh, budget. Uh, and I think the real tragedy is we haven't got a government that understands what we need to do to drive forward our future. Well, you can't say future. the ALP did. Well, thank you, you thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in, Rachel, to Alan and to Alana. It's certainly a heated argument about the budget, and that's what the Australians are saying as well out there. There's a lot of Australians that are not happy with this, Liberal and Labor and Green supporters, and also PUP supporters aren't happy. That is it for the show today. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're going to... We have no time to tell you how to enter Spin It to win it, so what we're going to do is say goodbye. Thank you for being with us. We're going to go out with a lovely young girl. Her name is Emma Sproul. She's part of the arts that we all support. And today she's ending the show with a great song, I think. It's called Don't Rain On My Parade. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Life's a candy and the sun's a bowl of butter Don't bring her on a cloud to rain on my parade Don't tell me not to fly, I've simply got to Someone takes the spell, it's me and not you Told you you're allowed to rain on my parade I might not bend down, I'll be my drum And if I burn down, you'll turn it back at least it didn't fake it, hat, sir. I guess it didn't make it wrong. Whether I'm the rose of sheer perfection, a freckle on the nose of life's complexion, a cinder on the shiny apple on a time. I gotta fly once, I gotta try once, only can die once, right, sir. Ooh, life is juicy, juicy, and you'll see. Gotta have my bite. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comma. I simply gotta march, my heart's a drama. Don't bring her on a cloud to rain on my parade. I'm gonna live and live now. Gets what I want, I know how. One row for the whole shebang. One throw that Hey, Mr. Rossin, here I am. I'll match my band. I'll be my drum. And if I'm found out, you'll turn it back, sir. At least it didn't make it happen. I guess it didn't make it Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comma I simply gotta march, my heart's a drama No, buddy, no, buddy It's gonna Play on my
This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh pure water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference.